Welcome to 843 TV, coming to you from the USCB Bluffton campus out in front of the beautiful Hargrave building. Today we're going to be hearing from faculty and students from the English and theater programs. Joining us first in our first segment, we have Dr. Molly Barnes. She's the assistant professor of English. Also joining us are senior students about to graduate this May, Sam Rayley and Cece Coding. In our next segment, we have Libby Ricardo. She's assistant professor in theater. Also talking with us is Maddie Wilkinson, a liberal studies major. So stick around and join us for this episode of 843 TV, where communities come to speak. Eight Four Three TV, where Bluffton comes to speak. Where Spring Island comes to speak. Where Hilton Head Island comes to speak. Where Beaufort comes to speak. Eight Four Three TV, where communities come to speak. Welcome to 843 TV. Today we are coming to you from USCB Bluffton in the beautiful Hargrave building and joining us is Dr. Molly Barnes and two senior students, Sam and Cece. Welcome everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having me. So nice to be here at USCB. It's such a beautiful campus and it's been growing um, quite rapidly as I understand. And mm -hmm. Dr. Barnes, you are in charge of the English Department. I'm a member of the English member Department. of the English Department. Mm -hmm. Share a little bit about the English program here at USCB. So the English Department is a really robust department on campus, and we offer a variety of majors. So students can earn a Bachelor of Arts degree in English, um, and beyond that, they can pursue a concentration in professional writing or in creative writing. And we're excited to start mentoring students um, to earn a Bachelor of English and um, that has a secondary English language licensure and we'll begin um, launching that very soon. Um, beyond that, students can also uh, earn minors in literature, creative writing, or professional writing. So two of the students here are seniors, going to graduate coming up in just a few months. I know that's got to be exciting. And uh, Sam, I understand that you were part of a special program in Washington, D.C. just recently. Would you share a little bit about that program that you were involved in? Yeah, so, um, you know, I think it was around last January or February, Dr. Barnes contacted me <coughs> about this opportunity to uh, intern up in D.C. and sort of jumped right into that and got uh, got all the applications filled out and everything and basically what the run through was was um, we had an interview up in Columbia and uh, after the interview they said okay you're in or you're out and then after that we got our placements um, and mine took till about I think it was August before I knew where I was, like what office I was going to work in mm -hmm. and ended up uh, getting in with uh, Congressman Ralph Norman 5th District um, replaced uh, M Mick Mulvaney and June in the special election and um, you know what I did up there I mean I just worked in the office um, which daily office activities were given tours um, uh, making sure certain documents got where they need to go writing memos stuff like that but, uh, outside of the office um, I lived in a house with 12 other people 11 other people uh, 10 from schools across the state of South Carolina um, and then one grad student. Uh, each each one of the ten from uh, schools from South Carolina had their own placements. So there were three or four others that were on Capitol Hill, and all the rest were working off. Um, and so you know that was a unique living experience there. But um, I also had tons of uh, neighbors from all around the country that I uh, you know would go and hang out with after work and. Um, I'm sure it was an unbelievable experience for so many reasons, like you said, the housing experience, living with others, and, and being in D.C. last year with a newly election year just taking place. So what are some of the big things that you took away from that experience that you find might be the most valuable as you look forward to graduation? And um, I think, you know, one of the biggest things I got out of it was uh, like more of a development of communication skills. Um, I'm sitting there answering phone calls all day to <laughs> angry constituents, and uh, you know, luckily uh. we had some some always calling. You know, uh, 
um, getting on a first name basis with you, but uh, being basically being able to um, come out of that, uh, almost able to talk to anybody. You know, I got yeah. I, I got to uh, uh, spend time with a congressman on a regular basis, and um, yeah, it was just a unique environment to be in. And those skills, yeah. like you mentioned, are going to be extremely valuable. And no matter where life takes you after graduation, just to be able to handle calls and, and different interactions with different folks. So we'll get back to you in just a little bit, but let's talk with Cece a little bit. You're from California. Yes, ma'am. So you've been out here for the last four years. Yes. How have you enjoyed your experience with uh, quite a different um, culture, going from oh, yeah. California <laughs> to a little low country of South Carolina? Yeah. Share a couple of highlights. Um, I grew up by the beach, so I wanted to keep living by the beach, and that's kind of how I found USCB. And I was planning on transferring originally, going to Columbia like a mm -hmm. lot of students do, but once I finally came here and got in with the program and met the English department uh, professors and the students, I just really found that this was my home and that I didn't really want to transfer, and I'm glad that I stayed. I'm sure you've developed a lot of good friendships and relationships, being that it is a smaller environment here versus yeah. the, the large campus. So. I'm sure that's helped you along the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now tell us about the major that you've been involved in here at USCB. Tell us what you've enjoyed about the English program. Um, well, here at USCB, um, we do study all the canonized literature that most schools study, but here we really try to like reach out um, to other works from people from all walks of life, which um, really broadens the perspective that we have in the classroom and really um, fosters a good discussion in the classroom because we have smaller classes so we can really learn from each other and as well as our professors um, which I find to be really uh, useful because hearing from other people that um, are reading the same stuff as you and hearing how they think about it can really change your perspective and give you a different way of looking at things. Um, I've also enjoyed that um, being an English major has set me up with skills that I can not only apply to work, but mm -hmm. like as, as an individual, just critical thinking, analyzing things, just course, yeah. stuff that really helps you form an opinion, which I find is really important in today's world oh, especially. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Dr. Barnes, share with us then, if the, as the students graduate, what kind of careers mm -hmm. might they be able to pursue with an English major? Uh, I think the English major sets students up to do a diverse array of professions. Um, and of course, we have graduates who've gone on to do kind of expected uh, lines of work. So we have a lot of educators. Um, we have some journalists. We have students who've gone on to graduate school and library school. Um, we have some freelance writers. Uh, but we also have students who take the skills that they've been learning in our class and go on to do a lot of things that we might not expect English majors to do. So we have graduates who are working as managers and owners of small businesses. We have real estate agents. We have people who sort of take a turn and go back to school and study other things. Um, including medicine and law. So there are lots of things that our students go on to do. And one of the things that I'm most proud of in our department is that unlike many English departments that think of the career question um, mm -hmm. on the defense, this is really something we pride ourselves on. So our students really begin thinking about what they want to do with their degree as early as their first year um, and their sophomore year. And we've built that into the curriculum. We have a whole course devoted to an introduction to the field where students start thinking about professionalizing themselves. And as they get older, they can participate in a range of other um, courses and extracurricular activities. So we have um, an editing and publishing practicum that students can take. And the students who are involved in that um, are in charge of publishing the two um, uh, publications that USCB has, The Pen, which is our award-winning literary magazine, and The May River Review, which is our critical journal where students publish their scholarship. Um, so I'm really happy about that because I think that it's something that distinguishes USCB from other campuses. Sam, um, as you look forward to graduating soon, and we've talked about some of the career options, what, what do you see as your next step? What are you interested in doing? So my entire <laughs> plan, uh, basically the whole of my college career has been to go to law school afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, and I just got hired as a legal assistant up in Beaufort. Uh, oh, great. For a local law firm. Great. And um, <clears throat> so I think I'm gonna take a year off in between uh, my undergrad and, and uh, law school and try and travel for a little while. There you go. Great, that's a great great thing to, to, to mm -hmm. consider doing for sure. And what about you, Cece? Are you planning to stay in this area? Um, it kind of depends on what options 
I kind of have. I'm keeping everything open. Um, I'll probably go back to California just for a little bit just to find my footing and then go on to something. But I mean, if I'm presented with an opportunity right out of school to move somewhere and start a job, I mean, I don't see why I wouldn't take it. All options are up for yeah. consideration. So if, uh, if there's a student watching, considering USCB, considering this major, what, what would you tell them based on the year's experience you have had now? I would say do it because um, here at USCB, the professors aren't just your professors. They actually are invested in you as a person mm -hmm. and they actually do care about you. It's not like in most universities where it's like a hundred people and then the professor and they walk in and walk out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And mm -hmm. you only really get to talk with them during office hours. Here it's like we're all family, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like if you ever need anything on a personal level, these people are always here to help you. If you ever need to talk about stuff, these people are always here to listen. I mean, it's just so much more than a university, you know? Yeah, that's some, some great things. And thank you all for sharing. And good luck to the both of you as you finish up your last semester. And you all stay right here. We'll be back with more 843 TV. Welcome back to 843 TV. We have been talking with faculty and students here at USCB Bluffton campus, learning so much about different programs and, and what it's like to be a student here. So joining us now is Libby Ricardo. She is the assistant professor in theater yes. and also another senior student, Maddie Wilkinson, a liberal <laughs> studies major. So welcome ladies. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for having us. So it's a lot of great information to learn from you all today. So let's start with you, Libby. Tell us a little bit about the theater program here. Sure. So uh, the theater program here at USCB is a, a minor that uh, any student in, th in any discipline can uh, decide to take. Um, we have a requirement of six classes, I think, mm -hmm. a certain number of credit hours that, that one must fulfill. Um, and uh, it involves practical applications, so acting classes, um, some upper division uh, classes like directing or intermediate acting, as well as um, some uh, theory and history classes that are also taught um, dealing with uh, performance studies. Do you produce shows? We sure do. So we're actually incredibly excited. I'm, I'm sorry, I keep referring to Maddie because <laughs> this is a really big uh, semester for us. We're doing a show called called She Kills Monsters, um, and it's that's a very interesting title. Yes, it is. So <laughs> it's it's a, a show that deals a lot with pop culture, and um, it is our first show in a while that is isn't in the public domain, so we paid rights, uh, licensing fees to, to do the show, um, which is a huge investment, but um, a worthwhile one because our students are incredible and they, they deserve to perform all different types mm -hmm. of shows. Um, and so that will, uh, the, the performance will be April 13th and 14th, and um, Maddie will actually be gracing the stage. And wow. uh, <laughs> uh, my husband, Dr. George Pate, is directing uh, that show. Um, but last semester we did The Tempest, um, which was sort of our way of dealing with our own uh, tempests as the hurricanes came through. And so it was uh, not only an educational experience, but also, I, I think, at least for me, cathartic. Um, and uh, we've done all sorts of shows, Antigone and um, Three Sisters. And so we, we've, we've done a lot of um, shows that were in the public domain that we could then adapt. and. Um, now we're, we're moving on to different terrain. We're very excited. Tell us about the facility. Where, where do they rehearse and where are the shows? <laughs> <laughs> so we, oh boy. <laughs> we actually, so um, USCB has uh, three distinct campuses. Um, we have the Beaufort campus, right. which has the Center for the Arts, which is a beautiful proscenium stage. Um, but it, it's very far from our student body and, and a number of students don't drive. And so we, we try to perform at least one of our shows down here on campus and so we have we use a flex space mm -hmm. um, which is actually kind of interesting because we can do whatever we want with it it doesn't have to fit the conventions of a regular theatrical space um, uh, so that's the campus center it's here on the Bluffton campus uh, and we rehearse in a classroom space um, which is actually not uncommon for a, a theater uh, productions at, at really any school um, and uh, we meet 
just twice a week. I, the, the students are incredibly disciplined and diligent, and so they're able to do quite a bit with a small amount of rehearsal time. Um, our students are incredible. They work very hard, not only academically, but also uh, they have jobs, and, and, and so we try to be as respectful as possible, but also give them the opportunity to perform. It's really neat to see your, your passion for this. Oh. It really shows <laughs> and excitement. So Maddie, tell us a little bit about your involvement in the theater, and how do you hope, or how do you anticipate that might help you in other academic pursuits? Yes, of course. So um, I be, my freshman year here was Dr. Pate's first year here as well, and so the theater program became a minor, was it the second? Yeah. It was the second semester mm -hmm. of my freshman year, and so I've kind of grown with the minor, mm -hmm. in a sense, and I also am the, what we call the director, or I'm on the executive board of our theater club on campus, Rogues and Vagabonds, and so I've been a part of the theater product every single theater production that they have had here since George and Libby have been here. I have done um, several of the theater co courses as part of my minor, but also just in addition to my major, which is liberal studies mm -hmm. and otherwise known as interdisciplinary studies. So um, I've been really thinking about <clears throat> lately how theater and what I've learned from Libby and from George, um, how it just relates us to the human experience. And that's not just in watching theater, it's mm -hmm. in uh, learning how to act and learning how to direct and dramaturgy and theory and the history of it. So, and that has been how I've been able to relate it in an interdisciplinary sense. And so I'm us using theater right now as part of my senior thesis. And I will be doing a qualitative study as part of my thesis. I'm in the process of developing that. And uh, my idea is that we can use theater and acting exercises in a writing classroom to teach writing. So I will be in the process of figuring out how all of that will go to get how all that will go together in order to present my thesis as part of my requirements for graduation. One thing that's just stuck out as you're speaking that through the theater you can really learn how to present yourself outside into the business world and, and just in the community and what an important thing that is just in life. So that that's Absolutely. really valuable. I'm sure you're learning very valuable skills here. So let me tell us how this theater department might interact or involve with the greater community of Bluffton or beyond. Sure, so we have been incredibly fortunate. Um, uh, Maddie actually assistant directed Romeo and Juliet with me a couple Aww. of years ago. It was mm -hmm. an incredible production. She did an enormous amount of work. Who doesn't love that one, right? Yeah, <laughs> so we were able to not only perform it on campus, but also take it to uh, Beaufort Middle School and Beaufort oh, High great. School. Oh, that's um, wonderful. I've been able to, to do residence, uh, an artist in residency at Beaufort Middle School applying um, theater skills to English classes, not unlike uh, what Maddie is working on for her thesis. Um, but we also have an incredibly uh, important relationship with Sun City and their theater. Mm -hmm. And actually, that was fostered uh, really by rogues and vagabonds and, and through um, Maddie and the, the rest of the executive board's hard efforts. And so um, they um, have worked together on improvisation. We hope to continue to collaborate because we have this incredible resource of of an, a vital community right next door to us, and um, yeah. intergenerational stuff is really great for, for play, I think. Not mm -hmm. to mention, even a little further down, Savannah with the arts oh, program absolutely. there and then beyond. Mm -hmm. And I love how you mentioned you go into the schools. That might just think how that might inspire some young grade school or high school. Uh, that's, that's just wonderful. We hope so. Yeah, you <laughs> hope so. <laughs> and you never know who you might touch when you're out there doing think. it. So how can someone learn a little bit more about the program? Where should they go? And sure. Well, <laughs> um, we have <laughs> a Facebook page, USCB Theater. Um, okay. Please uh, follow. And, and uh, we also um, have a, an active presence on the USCB site. And so if you okay. go to uscb.edu, you can look up our, our department, which is um, English Theater and Liberal Studies, and find out more not only about English, but also about the theater program and also liberal studies, which uh, Maddie is kind enough to represent mm -hmm. uh, two of the three. And really, you take quite a few uh, English courses uh, too. So. <laughs> English and writing is yeah, very much part of my so coursework, so um, kind mm -hmm. of all three. Yeah, <laughs> she's like the mascot. for. So you're a great representative of Absolutely. all the different things that USCB has to offer. And 
you mentioned you've lived on campus. So yes. campus life is a is a big part of a college experience. Oh, right. We've seen <laughs> that USCB has increased in this housing over the last few years. More mm -hmm. dorms are going up. So share with us the what is campus life like here? I will say first and foremost just the people on this campus are fantastic from my fellow students to the professors to the staff um, administrators just everyone is so welcoming and it feels like a little it feels like a little family almost mm -hmm. like there's just this sense of like safety and belonging that I think just yeah. kind of is in the in the aura of the campus, sure. it's kind of—it sounds kind of cheesy, but it's very much—it's very much a home for a That's lot of people. That's actually very important, especially to parents thinking, sure. "Is this a great, a good place for my child to live?" And what comfort in hearing what you've just said, mm -hmm. um, because you know, every every family is a little intimidated having their child go to school and college, and if they can be somewhere where they are felt like they're home and part of a community, that's just a wonderful thing. So it's fantastic. It's and there's so many activities. There's constantly something going on, um, whether it's within a different department and a different discipline. The Student Activities Board and Student Life is very active. There's several clubs. Mm -hmm. I mentioned Rogues and Vagabonds, which is the um, I'm an executive board member of, but there's so many different kinds and there, it appeals to interests of all different kinds of people. Uh, there's a, quite a few students living on campus now, which since I've been here, three dorms have been built. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's, been, it's been kind of intense, but also extremely exciting because yeah. you see more people and also more kinds of people coming to campus. So it's kind of one bit, it's a living experience and also a new learning opportunity for it, I would say. Well, we're out of time, but it's been wonderful hearing all about the programs here and the experiences of the students. Thank and you. best of luck to you as you graduate thank coming you. up soon. And thank you all for spending some time with this episode of 843 TV, where communities come to speak.